Hi. Welcome to the Brookdale Computer Users Group. Conceptually, Git has three parts. It has all of your source history and all of the control all, all of the controls, which is known as the commit history. Then it also has your working directory, which is where you're actually making the changes. And then it has a staging area called index, which is a place where Git marks things that go into your commit history. So you work, work, work in your working directory. And then you tell Git that, hey, I might want to send this stuff into the commit history by staging it. And then you actually make the decision that, hey, I'm going to go ahead and commit that stuff. Are we supposed to be seeing that? All nope. I see is the I will I will demonstrate any and all of this. Okay. Uh, so first things first, how do we get a Git repository? Right. So there is a couple of different ways that I want to show you. So I'm going to create a directory called creatively T. And I'm going to create a brand new Git repo right here in this directory. I'm going to type Git in it. And Git tells me that it initialized an empty Git repo right at the bottom here. Oh. Right? Oh. And uh, it has some other hints information. But what we see here is nothing new. Unless we do an ls-al, and we see that what we got created was a directory called .git, which is where Git stores all of its private information, including the commit history and the index and all that other stuff. So what you have here currently is your current working directory. So if I create a file okay, and put some stuff in here, All you see is the file that I created. And if I type git status, it tells me that I don't have any commits, that I have a main branch called master, and that I have an untracked file. Okay. And I can say git add dot to say, hey, go find everything that I haven't added and stick it in there. And that marks everything in the index as candidate to being committed, okay? And if I do a git status now, that tells me now that I have a new file to be committed. And notice it gives me a hint on how to remove it, right? So if I type a git commit and nothing else, it'll actually pop me into the editor to make a commit message. And I'm just gonna say initial, if I can type that, and type zz to exit the editor. And now it says that I have a brand new file. And if I do a git status, I now have nothing to commit. Everything's clean. Nothing's changed with my file. But now I can do a git log. And it actually tells me that I, the author, on this date, made this commit. Okay. And this commit has this funky long ID, which we might come back to later if we have enough time, but I'm just noticing that it's currently there. Okay. What editor are you using? Uh, VI, okay. Vim, but it doesn't matter. It will use whatever editor you have set as dollar editor, I believe. Yeah, the external variable, ver the, ex the external variable editor does control that. And Across if, many I, things. if I say unset editor and say, let's edit this, uh, let's edit a new file. Okay. 
Okay. Now I have a brand new file. And of course, now I have a new file to commit. And I say git add. And now I can just say I want to add this file. So I might have several files that I've edited, by all, but I'm only edit, ready to add this one. So I'm just going to add just that file. Right? And if I say git commit now, notice that it pulled up a very different editor. It pulled something called nano. Yep, that's my, that's my, my editor choice. And I think control X will, control O, control X. Yeah, that worked. And if I do a git log, now I have two commits in my history. And of course they have different magic numbers. Every object can get, whether it's a file, a directory, a commit, any, any object of any memory in Git will have this kind of an ID called a SHA-1 or a hash code. Okay, now you created, um created two files. You did the yep. foo and you did the new foo. Yep. But as far as Git's concerned. Yes. Okay, they're but when you're doing you're looking at your git log, it doesn't mention anything about foo and new foo. Git log has a ton of options, and one of them is stat. And if you tell it to say stat, then it will tell you which files you added and okay. how many ch lines were changed, added, or removed in each file. Okay. 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 Are you able to access this and via a web browser from another machine at this point? At this point, there is nothing that knows about it anything other than on this machine alone. Because you created the repository on this machine. Absolutely. There's How do you all, get the... There's okay. all kinds of distributed stuff that you can do with Git, whether you want to do it yourself or if you want to use some external service such as Bitbucket, GitLab, GitHub, or anybody else that might host Git for you. Or you can have your own server hosting Git externally. You know, um, I can also do a git diff, and if I wanted to know what was changed between here and there, I can say head and head caret, which is git's syntax of parent of head. And now I can see that from the current revision to the previous revision, this file called new foo was before called nothing, dev null, and the lines were subtracted if you go backwards. And of course, if I were to change the order in which I specify these arguments, then it would tell me that the same lines were added, right? So you can do differences on any file for any revision, any place in history. Now that was for text files. Uh, for how would you, it, I don't know of a good way of interpreting binary differences. If the files were binary, I believe it would only tell me that they were different. Uh, how You're about, right. yeah, I don't, I don't recall exactly what it will tell you for differences between binary file, but I would expect that they, it would just note that they were different, yeah. but it could possibly give you more information as to by how much they differ if they didn't differ by too much. But in many cases, files will be compressed and they, and they will differ pretty significantly. Okay, okay so let just as a for instance, if I had a, regardless of the uh -oh. application, the particular application that I used, mm -hmm. I have a spreadsheet number one, mm -hmm. and I have a name, address, phone. I'm keeping track of. No contacts. Mm -hmm. I save it as spreadsheet one. Mm -hmm. The next day I put in 10 more people yep. and I save the changes. If I saved it 
if I saved it the first day, did the commit and, you know, all the cutesy stuff that you did here, and then did the, then went in there, edited it, and did the same thing. The only yep. thing, the git, the diff and the git would tell me that it was different, but not necessarily what was changed. However, it seems like that's where the comments would come in. Sure. So if I were doing the commit the second day, I would say added 10 more people. Yep. yep. That would be the logical thing to do, but you, but you would, you might also have information within the file that would help you and to determine what happened. So <laughs> I just created two text files with PS, right? I just ran PS twice and saved the output to PS1 and PS2, right? Okay. I expect those files are going to be very slightly different, but not very much, right? And yeah, of course they're different because processes get created, destroyed all the time, right? It looks like even Zoom managed to make a couple of changes. Right. But anyway, what I'm going to do, so, but mostly these files, they are 800 kilobytes, as we can see here, and they're mostly the same. So I'm going to gzip both of them. Right. Then I'm going to add them both to. Not to go into it tonight, but my usual technique with Git is I, I keep more information than most do. I actually write my change history to a file. I use typically use dot up to um, a pretty voluminous output, a short line, one liner, and then a little more details as it makes sense. And then I there's a way of pointing Git. Uh, uh, commits to that file rather than using the typed in and it just helps me enormously over time when I go back six months or six years later and trying to figure out what I was doing there. There's a million options to every git command and almost infinite amount of functionality to be had in addition to the very simple things that I'm demonstrating. Nonetheless, if you, if you are adding things and you don't feel like going into the editor, you could just supply the commit comment right on the command line. Like, yeah, that's why I said I'm not doing it, going it, suggesting we go into it tonight. Right. Uh, a quick Google search for how to track changes in a Word document with Git gave an answer. So it doesn't seem impossible. I am, my intuition says that the changes, I'm not sure what's going on here. Surely they're not the same. Different sizes. Mm-hmm. Well, I committed them both at the same time, so there's really not much to be seen here. Right? I'm not comparing two revisions of the same file. Let me remove one of them. Right, and I can just... I already told Git that I removed that file, so it will it knows how to do that. But notice that it, this says that I deleted this file, but I can actually use this to get it back. Or actually, I can simply say git checkout head. Uh, No? Okay. Oh, that's because I haven't committed it yet. So 
Interesting. No? Oh, I never committed the file, therefore it, it, you cannot get it back. Hello? Okay. No, I did commit it. Okay, what's going on? When you leave off the stage, yeah. There you go. Okay. Okay. So there is nothing changed. I'm just going to remove this file. And of course, get still observes. What does the minus M do? Memo. Minus M is a syntax for supplying the, the message on the command line rather than going into the editor to create it. Uh -huh. okay. But this change is not staged, so commit failed because there was nothing to commit. Uh, uh, uh. Right now, if I do this, now I have a commitment and the commit message says that I deleted that file. Right now I'm going to do PS dash AEF to PS one dot. And then. Just out of curiosity, what's that uh, white on a red one that shows up at the end of your command prompt? I'm sorry, say that again? At the end of your command prompt, you get this uh, a one on a red background. Um, at the end of my command prompt? Yeah. Just the middle of the page. Oh, the, the one up here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the exit code. Oh, okay. So, so this is... The command prompt is generated by a utility called Powerline, which is extremely nice and extremely aware of a whole lot of things and is very customizable and all kinds of things like that. One of the things that you might observe is that it actually knows that I'm in a Git directory and on a master branch. Yeah. Right? Powerline is pretty nifty. Um, I highly recommend it. Yeah, that's cute. I just couldn't see what I see what that's doing now, but I didn't see it before. Okay. So I have two PS ones, one that I added here and one that I added here, right? And so I want to see what the difference is between this revision. And notice that I'm just using part, a piece of the hash code to specify the revision number. There are several other syntaxes that I could use. Ooh, what did I do here? Yeah, that's what I wanted. There we go. PS1 in the first revision and PS2 in the second revision differ. That's all I'm getting is, is the information that they're different. Okay. That so. tell, won't tell you what the difference is. No. Well, it, does, it doesn't understand it. Git knows nothing about the internal structure of the files. Right? It's, it's only the application that, that understands that. Well, it's just using 
diff? Git uses diff internally with a, with a whole bunch of options, but I think Git diff might be smarter than the standard diff, and it particularly it understands the idea of revisions and things like that. So we started out with creating a repo, a Git repo, right? Okay, and what's the GitHub? Is that just a, uh, that's just out on the internet, available to everybody? Well, that's, Microsoft that's part of this talk later, where we go to GitHub and copy things, but actually not very far away. So one of the things that got asked, or that makes sense is we created a Git repo. How do we get rid of a Git repo and make this just a regular directory? Here's how you do that. You remove the Git subdirectory and it's gone. This is not a Git repo anymore. All the history is gone. Everything else is gone. Okay. But let's do something different. The files are still there. The files are still there. I didn't delete them. Right. But, you know, if you wanted yeah. to know how to uninit a Git repo, that's how you do that. I could also init a brand new directory. So before I just did a Git init in a directory, but I can just say, and now I've created a directory called T1. So that's just two syntaxes for creating an empty Git repo. Actually, if there were any files in this directory, it wouldn't object to it. So uh, the third way to create a Git repo, thanks for asking, Andy, is to clone an existing repo, <coughs> right? So the way that you do that is with a Git clone command. Okay, and so I got this URL from Sujit's presentation the other day. So I'm just going to go ahead and clone that repo. Boom. As you can see, it told me that it was cloning it into directory BCUG. That's because it's named BCUG here. I could have said, hey, clone this to my BCUG. and it perfectly well complies. And now I have two BCUG copies of BCUG repo. So here's all the Sujit stuff from the other day, right? And this is a Git repo, which means that I have all the history of Sujit's changes. I can go back to any of his changes that were made over time Sergey, were there any permissions that you needed involved? I, I missed something. How did you get his his uh, stuff? I got his stuff by specifying a public URL to his repo. So it so happens that I clone this over HTTPS protocol, which means that I'm not in any way authenticated to GitHub, but his repo is public, and therefore I can read from it. I cannot write into it which HTTPS doesn't allow me to write to it anyway. I would have to use a different style of URL to do that, right? But all I did was make a copy of it. So I have a complete copy and therefore I can do anything, anything I want with this copy. I cannot change his stuff, but I can change it in my copy. And if I wanted him to actually incorporate my changes, I could send him a request. Mm -hmm. I get one of the features that Git has that is relatively unique. Many other popular source control systems do not have that feature is Git is fully distributed. That is, it does not enforce a client server architecture. I could be sharing 
code or files with multiple servers, people can pull my changes in or not as they wish. There is no specific tree structure that Git enforces, right? It only, it only keeps track of a sequence of things as they happened. So in particular, yes? Only because, only because time is getting short. Okay, so yep. you have the repository, then you created a file, yep. no big deal. Just any kind of file, either copied it there, created it there, whatever. Um, yeah. Then you did. What was the next oh. thing you did? Yeah. Then it was. So I a created static. a file, and then I right. added it. I marked it for commit by doing a git add, and then I committed it by doing a git commit. And that's really pretty much all you have to know. Git log will display you history. Git status will display you the current status, but you can literally just create a Git repo and do a Git commit or a Git add on any file that you've changed and a Git commit to actually commit your changes. And you can just cycle that and you have a complete Git repo. There is all kinds of other capabilities. For example, now, yeah, one of the- you were talking about something, Mark, it went to, to a staging area. Yes. Is that when you mark it for commit? Yes, that's when you do a git add. Okay, so the git add takes it from, basically, it takes from. the copy. It marks the copy saying, okay, I'm ready to go. So here is a file with stuff, right? Right. And a bunch of other things that existed before. So I do a git status. And it tells me that, hey, there's a file that's not tracked. And I need to use a git add to get it tracked. That is to include, to mark it to be committed. Is there a git manual page on your machine? If you say there man is, git, that there lists is all of these arguments? Git help will tell you the very simple things. Well, it's all simple, but yeah. the, the sequence, the sequence, um, is, okay, you create the repository, then you created a file, and because you don't know what's going on, you would do a, uh, if you, at that point, if you did a git status, it'd say, there's nothing going on. No, it I'll would say that what? it would say that you have an untracked file. That doesn't say there's nothing going on. It says, "Hey, I recognize a file that you have that is untracked. The rest of it is up to date with whatever I pulled down from the origin." So it would it would tell you if you just created the file and did a git status. Yep, that would tell you. That's what just happened. That's what he's got there. Okay. So there's an untracked file. Now I have two untracked files. Now I'm going to mark one of them for commit. And now I have one untracked file and one file to be committed. Okay. And I can put them both, up, add both of these files so that they're both committed, or I can make two separate commits. Okay. Right? How large? Now I committed one of them. 
the other file is still untracked. Right? right? Notice that if I do a git log now, so JIT made all the changes before this, but the top change is now mine. Of course, I have to set this up as author. And the way that that's done is it's in my home directory. But Git will tell you how to do that. I'm just, I'm just trying to get an understanding of, you know, kind of the, the workflow. And, you know, I mean, going into help yeah. and getting the syntax, that's all great. But if you don't understand the basics, if I don't understand the basics of, you know, okay, create one, now it's it's ready for something. You do a status, okay, now it shows that it's untracked. Uh, add it. Adding it says it's marked to commit. Yep. It has to get added before you can commit it. Yep. yep. Well, if you try to commit something, so if I do a get status now, Right, I still have an untracked file, and I have right. nothing added to commit at the bottom. Right, so if I say git commit now, it tells me, hey, there's nothing to commit. Right, but you have to do the git add to track it. Yes, and then once it's tracked, then you can do the commit. Right. Yep, that's what it. That's what it tells me right here. So when you have a repository on your machine, is it is the repository in the .git file or someplace else? The repository goes, the .git subdirectory is where the repository is physically realized. Yes. So it's not the, the only uh, way, it's not the only way that a repository can look, but if you have a repository with a working directory, unlike a different kind, which is known as a bare repository, hmm. which doesn't have a working directory. But if you have a, a regular repository with a working directory, then there is a .git subdirectory. And if there isn't one, so if I try to do a git status here, where there isn't a repository, it's gonna say, hey, this is not a Git repository because it couldn't, it goes up and up and up all the directory levels until it finds a dot git directory and it didn't find one. Okay. Okay, so this is not. I think I was here. Hey, Sergey, are we at a point where we can break for next time? Uh, we're always at a point where we can break for next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just asking the um, question. No, no, no problem. I mean, you know. Excellent. If if everybody's sufficiently confused, then then, then it's probably a good time. Yeah. Uh, okay. you know, you, Sergey, no, you it, always do a very clear presentation. It's a, little, it's a lot it's to a follow, scary. but it was clear. It's, it's a very rich subject. I highly cannot recommend the book and the tutorials that I send out in the posting about a week ago. I cannot recommend those highly enough. Okay. And this okay. is recorded. Yeah. Yes, it is. Awesome. Yep. It's a little scary because just those handful of commands, the way you demonstrated it, it almost makes sense. That's what's scary. <laughs> it, <laughs> using Git in a very simple way is actually very, very, very uncomplicated. And to work with a remote repository such as GitHub, once you set it up, there is literally one more command added. And the command is git push. But you blew away the whole thing of, number one, it's only for programmers, code jockeys. Nice. Number two, it's like there's this big area you have to create your, I'm thinking, when you talk about repositories, I'm thinking about like, uh, you know, like a, a distro watch or, you know, one of these no, places no, 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 no. where they have 87, 87 gazillion gigabytes of download crap. Nope. And uh, just a single git clone command if you're looking at to copy somebody else's or a git init command if you're looking to do your own. 
Yeah, but even at that, again, you know, clone. Oh my God, I'm going to clone a mirror site. Oh my God. But you're oh. only getting you're only getting the part that Sujit set is yep. in the public. I'm sure yep. he's got a much he's got many more or much have, larger repositories. I have no visibility. I think that's his, the only public repository that he has. Right. But to be honest, I don't remember. But let's see. No, I'm sure he does. But the idea is when you say cloning a repository, you're only cloning what he said you can clone. That's right. Yeah. The part oh, oh absolutely. Yes. No so, problem there. Uh, so, yes, he has several repositories, actually. Notice that uh, the BCOG repository, where did it go? Oh, it's not even listed. Oh, it's listed in the popular ones. So apparently, he oh, he has 19 of them. There you go. And well, BCUG happens to be one of them, but there is a whole bunch of other things that you can probably go browse and look at. Um, and I'm sure he's got some that you can't go into and look at. He may, he is just as likely to have, oh, it actually lists whether republicly, whether they're public or not. I don't know if it lists the private ones. May not. Uh, it may not. Uh, well, let's see. If I pop an incognito window and go to github.com and oh, it doesn't even let me. Oh, I have to sign into GitHub. Huh. Yeah. The other thing is, I think GitHub kept pri in the beginning, GitHub re uh, kept private repositories as a pay only feature. I think oh, that's I see. Changed. I think that's changed, but that may have changed. Uh, so the deal. So here's my repositories, and it only shows one public one. And I think I was playing with something that was years ago. I don't remember what this is. <laughs> um, something about Fire Monkey. Okay. Uh, well, if you're playing with your monkey, I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, obviously, I was just playing with my monkey. Um, Sergey, thank you very much. It was enlightening. Uh, we barely scratched the surface, but I'm glad that it was interesting. And certainly, we can do more, and we can do more in any size chunks that, that folks desire. Very good. Very cool. Yes. Yeah. One attaboy. Yeah. One Absolutely. attaboy. My, my, my pleasure. Okay. I think I've had enough fun for the night. Yeah, me too. All right, folks. Uh, I appreciate you all patiently listening and, they, and being tolerant of any places where I messed up. But uh, any discussion would be very much encouraged to continue on the on the bulletin board. Uh, you know, in groups.io, I would love to hear questions. You know, or anything else. Be at least because I can answer on my own time scale and maybe think a little before I plop things out there. Yep. Would always be uh, let me just comment then. Uh, Steve, Drew, uh, you are not, you may, are you members of Meetup? John Spaziri, you member of Meetup. If you're a member of Meetup, you are not a member of BCUG. But this year, 2023, BCUG has declared a dues moratorium, so it is free to join. Go to bcug.com and you can find out how to join free for the first year. And then you could get access to the groups.io Linux discussion forum. Okay. Meetup is kind of just a publicity place. We have hundreds of members, but uh, yep. you don't get our announcements except through Meetup. You don't have access to the discussion forums. All right, so go to bcug.com and sign up, and then I can join groups.io after that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it'll point you to another website where you actually do the uh, joining. There's an application on the website. 
and you can get to it by clicking on the, the information for joining by clicking on that uh, announcement at bcug.com and then you'll be sending the application and you'll get all the information you need. Thank you. We're glad to have you join us tonight and we welcome your further participation. Thank you. Any kind of thing that you would like to discuss here or in other groups, as well as having access to APCUG workshops. Right. I, I, my, I belong to a user group in Sarasota that's a member of APCUG. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. I participate in, well, I, I, I participate in the Windows workshop by Huey. Yes, I'm filling in for Huey on Sunday. Oh, okay. All right. So if you join the meeting on Sunday uh, for the uh, Central Sarasota, Florida, mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday. Yeah. Are you using an app to put those uh, eyebrows? Uh, no, that's a feature of Zoom. <laughs> love it. Enhance, enhancement. I love it. Zoom uh, has Zoom filters. It. It's cool. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Fred. Yeah, if you if you right click on your picture and you go into video filters, you can dress yourself up all kinds of fancy. Now the beard is that? Also the beard is real. <laughs> <laughs> I was kidding. Sometimes, sometimes it's not quite as easy to tell. <laughs> so, Fred, are you going to come back my, next I time? I heard my name mentioned. I heard yes. my name mentioned. What's up? Are you going to come back next time, or was this too boring? Uh, <laughs> you're, you're the canary, right? I'm the canary. So, well, yeah. Uh, well, you know, for borderline interest, because sometimes you show up and sometimes you don't. Well, I I came because of you. Um, oh. uh, I I use Git or GitHub. I'm not sure which one. I have a 11, 12 year old uh, nephew, and I was teaching him Scratch. And we had to find a way of putting Scratch on a website independent of someone having to have the underlying uh, program or right. going online to uh, MIT, scratch.edu. Uh, yep. Anyhow, I found an app there and I, I had found it through Git or GitHub. And I don't know, I understand that GitHub is owned by Microsoft. Am I? It is now. Okay, so I I am correct. All right. Yeah. So, but there are there are other providers. GitHub is not the best. It's just most common, in my opinion. One of the GitHub will give you free accounts for public repos, and it will allow you to have some number of private repos, but you can't share them with other people. Yeah. Other sites, right. uh, other providers will let small teams collaborate for free. For example, Bitbucket will let up to five people collaborate for free mm -hmm. on a private repo, not on a public one. Well, at my stage of my career, I, I don't expect to have a, uh, a, a, a repo site, uh, so. <laughs> anything anything that you do that you edit, anytime you edit edit anything, a repo is an appropriate answer. Because it allows I, you to go back and and observe history. We have revi we have revisions in Windows and even even that I don't use. I, I I'm old fashioned. I rename my files, add an A, add a B, add a C, or one two three, and that yeah, suffices just for me. Yeah, right. that that is. Um, so GitHub can do that. Um, that dot git file can just hold your git repo lo locally. Um, there are some other much more simpler um, repository programs and much more limited function too, um, but that would be the function of an, another meeting, probably. I yeah. don't know that there is something quite as simple to use as Git. I've used many source control systems, yeah, uh, or version control systems. Uh, Git just is head and shoulders above anything else that I've used. And just uh, refresh my memory. Git stands for GIT stands for something in technology yeah, or what? Uh, I okay. sent a couple of links to videos and Linux who or Linus Torvalds who created Git claims that he named all, all the things that he creates after himself. 
The first <laughs> one was was Linus, and the second one was Git. <laughs> so no, it doesn't stand for anything. I don't think. No, yeah, well, from what I read, uh, a document by Linus uh, Linux Linus Torvalds himself is that it comes from a Giddy, uh, British phrase of Git. It's just a kind of a stupid person. <laughs> yep. yeah, th there is multiple versions of the meaning behind the name, but the, yeah, sure. those two are the the more common. But the reality is that officially doesn't stand for anything. Yeah, sure. mine goes back, was it 20 years or so? <laughs> There's there. a picture of a penguin in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, guys, are we ready to call it a night for this one? Yep. Have a good night, guys. Okay. Okay. Thank Very you, sir. Good. Thank Love you, it. Bill. Bill, Thanks to everybody you. who yep. came yep. and participated. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bill, I hope you feel better. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. I don't feel too bad. You have the Zoom file, right? Bill, you have the Zoom file, right? Say again? You have the Zoom file, correct? You're, you're yeah, I recorded it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so um, you know, just just send me a link and I'll take care of the rest. Uh, okay, Bruce. All you're right. Gonna put up your, you're going to put up your script, right, Bruce? Yeah, I'll put something up after I figure out how. Give me a day or three. Okay. Okay. All right. Take a week. So, do I stop the recording out. first or just end it? Uh, end the meeting for all. And yeah. allow the conversion of the video to happen. Yeah, take yeah. a while. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. Computer. Okay. All right. Guys. All right. See you guys the again. Chat, so. See you next the time. The chat is a separate file. The chat is a separate file. It's a yeah. Yeah. File. I, I think I figured that one out. Okay. Okay. Have a good one, folks. All right. All right.